Hi students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acids and Bases Reactions module number six. This is video number two and just a quick um, intro I guess onto natural indicators. I just want to give you a little bit of background here mainly because this is something that you'll be doing during class time. Uh, we'll be making in and testing natural indicators and there's a number of different types in fact, it's likely that you've already, um, in your previous science experience, made a natural indicator, particularly out of something like red cabbage. It's such a good substance for um, using as an indicator. But what are indicators? Well, indicators are just plant dyes which change colour in the presence of an acid or base via an equilibrium reaction. So we can bring some of what we understood from the equilibrium topic into this topic to give us a little bit of an idea of what's happening with indicators. What we want to do now, of course, though, um, in terms of indicators is see if we can explain exactly what's going on. So here's an example that we might um, use to help us to determine what's happening in terms of acid base indicators. So um, as with any equilibrium, there has to be um, both a forward and a reverse reaction occurring and both occurring at the same rate with no macroscopic changes uh, for uh, equilibrium to be established. The other important thing about um, indicators is there should be some s uh, significant colour difference between the two different sides of the equilibrium. And you will have noticed that in the last topic when we um, carried out a few different equilibria shifts in order to see the equilibrium position changing from the left to the right and the colours changing uh, as a consequence of that. So indicators do the same thing. What's important about an indicator though um, is that it's affected by acidic or basic solutions. So we talked in the last uh, video about the fact that acids are going to have these hydrogen ions in solution. Therefore, they're going to increase the hydrogen ions. So if the concentration of the hydrogen ions is to increase, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to re verse or to counteract that change which means to try and bring the concentration of the hydrogen back down and therefore it does that by shifting in this case to the left which means we favor the solution that uh, has a red appearance likewise if we add a base the reverse happens so let me put that in green so if we add a base what often happens is that the um, hydrogen ions are accepted. So if you think about a, a base like sodium hydroxide, this is going to be neutralizing the hydrogen ions and therefore their concentration will drop. And so Le Chatelier's principle says, well, what we want to do then is we want to increase that and then we're going to have to shift it to the right, which means we're going to favor the blue solution. So this is how indicators work. There's an equilibrium that's established and then there's a shift that occurs as we add acid and base. And of course, we, we hopefully will be aware of the fact that if we continue to do this with the same solution, add some acid, you'll turn it red, add some base, you'll turn it blue, add a little bit more acid, you can neutralize that base and eventually the acid concentration will be sufficient to push it back into the red region. So we definitely have an equilibrium happening here and we have the colors that are telling us where um, that equilibrium is and whether the solution is more acidic or more basic. So what we then need to do is to choose a substance that's going to do this readily. Now a lot of plants, particularly flowers, are very um, brightly coloured and the pigments in those colours can actually change depending on the pH of uh, a solution into which they are placed. Here's an example of both some different types of indicators that you may use and also some results that were put together with uh, red cabbage. I'll go back to my blue. Red cabbage. Um, and it shows quite a range of different colors. And if our indicators are going to be useful, then they need to be able to tell us the difference between acidic solutions, neutral solutions, and basic solutions, and to be really effective, perhaps even to distinguish between solutions that are very acidic from those that are mildly acidic, or solutions that are very basic from those that are mildly basic. So you can see here, we've got a range from really strong um, or strongish acid solutions at one end to very basic solutions um, at the other end. And here's just a couple of different examples. Red cabbage by far gives the best results and it's often the easiest one to use, but it may be worth investigating if you're given the option to do this in class. Um, 
uh, some different types of indicators. Perhaps you might want to even bring some in when we go through this um, topic, um, just to test and see how effective different indicators are. Some are more effective than others, but sometimes carrying out the experiment will give you an opportunity to be able to critically analyse the effectiveness of different indicators in solution. So have fun when you make this and thanks for watching.